Welcome, everyone. This is the January 3rd, 2024 Jail and Zones production users call. We have Dan, Antone, Goran, Nick, Chris, Jamie, and myself. And some tiny housekeeping notes. I have cleaned up the minutes from last year, which just kind of got long and long and long. So I put those in their own document. That is linked at the very top there. I cleaned up the little header of all the documents. And... Uh, I've dropped in the desired features doc. We can go through that if you like. Uh, Antrenig and I were talking about the PID virtualization review. That could be very interesting in the near term because that might unleash the use of Docker under, under FreeBSD jail. And I've noted some little helpers that have been uh, produced over the last year or two. Thank you. Uh, let's see, that would be Daniel for NetGraph Buddy and Jan for the make e pair. And we've got a typo here. And Goran, I will put your topic in there correctly. And uh, Jamie, as the maintainer of jail, do you have anything new to report or ideas for the coming year? Uh, no, not, nothing new in my world. The only ideas for the coming year is the ones we've already discussed. Oh, cool. And for what it's worth, did you ever look at the PID virtualization review? I'll put that in the chat. Uh, no, I did not. I will, uh, I'm not aware of. So Bjorn Zeeb had produced that some time ago, 2018. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. And so, oh, obtained from over here. Let's see where over here is. That is somebody's site. Okay. So a bunch of effort went into it and it's sort of hanging out there. Um, buildable, this is good. And so, yeah, uh, the conversation doesn't have to take place here and now, but I'd love to have that on everyone's radar because it's efforts like that where someone went to a bunch of trouble. And let's try to honor that. So let's see. Uh, Chris, have, has there been any movement uh, in your research on, say, uh, state tracking or in the enterprise working group? Or, yes, you're unmuted. And Chris, if you're in the middle of something, that's okay. Untrenig, uh, let's see. We've been discussing things like the PID virtualization. And specific yes. to jail, I know uh, you've looked at jailing Beehive, among other things. Do you have news to report? Um, not at the moment. I do have to report that based on what we've been using on production 14 plus jails has been stable i guess we haven't had any issues and also from a vendor's perspective uniquely in, freebsd uh, 14 or 14 quantity of jails uh 14 as in the freebsd 14 as a vendor who uses jails we as in not in you know SaaS product but you know something that we ship to the customer uh, an appliance. We haven't seen any issues at the customer side, at least nothing jail related. Right. Uh, we, we, so that's good. And also, I mean, the public interface is still pretty much the same. So as even as a uh, jail management vendor, also everything is good. But we're seeing a um, more and more requests from customers regarding uh, uh, some tiny features that we've discussed about at the end of last year. One of them, for example, is about the uptime, right? We started the conversation last year and it kind of, kind of got stuck there. So uh, yeah, these are some ideas is that do we need to change this in base or is there a hack around it? Uh, and again, little tiny things that we started discussing last year, uh, uptime being the most uh, common one that people keep asking. And did I hear you ask a few months ago if you should go all opinionated and depend on dot include? Yes, and we decided to do that. As in, uh, we will be supporting the host will be FreeBSD 14 only. 
as the jailer one point or the, rather zero point one point. 0.1.2, yeah, 0.1.2 will be uh, exclusive for 14 on the host. The GL can be whatever it wants. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, everyone else will be, will recommend them to use the older version. At least one good thing from Git is that you can get an older version, I guess. So totally. uh, we're pretty happy with that. We also cleaned up some of the uh, make files and we also ported the make files to Super V. To make it as easy as possible to make a package. I, I remember Chris opened that topic a while back about why Jailer isn't a package. So I think I'll be working on that in the coming two weeks to have it as a package in free BSD. Awesome. Um, let's see what else there. Uh, I do have a lot of notes though. One sec. Oh yes, and um, uh, I and not necessarily a jail topic, but a fourteen topic. Um, some D-trace stuff are broken. I understand why those are not even reported because like no one uses them except a very few number of people. Uh, that's been reported by my team. Like things that are clearly working on 13.1. Yeah, we haven't upgraded to 13.2. We just moved from 13.1 directly to 14. Um, Do you have uh, example ones you can drop? Uh, I I I will I'll bring the examples next week because my okay, team cool. worked on those. They just sent me a bug report internally that those things are just not working anymore, and they were supposed to work. Got it. Um, yeah. Uh, uh for us it's jail related because we detrace jails right as yep. as a honeypot solution. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, we well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Okay, and. On the broader topic of dot include, ah, is that worthy of a wiki page, a handbook entry, a blog post, something in between? How can we let the world know that that exists because a whole bunch of effort went into it and it has tangible um, benefits? I, I think I think uh, I, I have some notes on that. So my, uh, some of you might know that I give classes to a boot camp. And one of their last homeworks, so to say, was to deploy a jail. The the not so smart ones went after blog posts. And here's the thing, like some things are not up to date, obviously, on blogs. Most authors don't are not gonna go and say, you know, oh, this blog post is not up to date anymore, you know. So um, but then on the handbook, while the web page has been updated, we do lack some things, not everything, but some things. Uh, one of them is for years, the handbook has recommended BSD, uh, BSD install jail or BSD config jail. No, BSD install jail. Yeah, BSD install jail. That's the subcommand of BSD install. So, um, and you can even see it in archives, people linking it in blog posts. There's the versioned handbook out there on the web server that still has that. And it's not a recommended way to use BSD install jail because I mean, it's it's not as 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 useful as you'd think. Um, and another thing that the jail handbook lacks, at least according to my students have seen is, um, um is about zfs so basically uh telling people oh like the actual correct way if you are on zfs is creating a data set per uh jail for example right that's that like there's no mentioning about that at all like someone should link that knowledge in their head together right uh so that that's one thing that my students have also noticed um, I have a list of notes actually of what my students have noticed on or based on the handbook or older versions of the of the handbook. I'll I'll just bring in them in the in the in the next couple of minutes. Let that would be my, fantastic. My just keep it coming. Boom here. That's the doc. Go for it. It's it's your call, your doc. Okay, we have a post from Dan. Um Antreneg, I'm uh, yeah, you focus on that. Uh those are all the correct topics because we need canonical good documentation or else we all kind of suffer here. Ah, yes. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. You are giving us a, a, a treat to what your office looks like. Love it. 
it's it's the first time I've managed to use the Roku to extend the desktop. And it allows me to watch the meeting up there and do other stuff down here. Is that an immersive thing? So actually should have a projector and we can all be in the same room kind of bopping around. Love it. Yep. Yep. Love it. Love it. Is Xenia's. You don't have to put that in unless you want to. I love it. No, this is, the, I mean, if that in any way helps you engage with this, I'm all for it. And obviously some of us on the call have had some long discussions outside the call. And I've thought about plopping up a projector and just standing vaguely in the same room with them, just because that's what, you know, Star Trek promised us long ago. Uh, okay, so I will phrase that. Um, Nick, do you have anything on your mind? I'm just picking on people. <laughs> um, the the thing about BSD installed jail, I do yes. agree with Antronic that it that it lacks the ZFS support. That's something that I was, I I did. I learned in the past where to set up the ZFS data set first and then I ran then I run BSD install jail um onto that there's also some other ways that should be could be documented about promoting uh, like a base jail um or or a ZFS cloning a jail that and thin jails I wish there was a little bit more documentation on that in the handbook But uh, yeah, that's 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 no disagreement much, here. Which I have um, an, another note from students again. Not sure if exactly jail related. Um, now we also create user home. No, now we create home data set. Um, in 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 FreeBSD, and uh, I think it's a good idea to again not jail related but i think we're, we're the most qualified people to do this as fast as possible the user add utility or add user utility i'm not sure which one user add utility which acts which asks interactive questions also using the installer can also ask in case it figures out that you're using zfs would you like to create a separate data set for the user so uh, that's a feature suggestion that's a, that's a feature suggestion in user add uh, also, would that would be also become part of the installer, of course, uh, in BSD config BSD install. So um, that I think that would be very cool. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to work on that over the weekend. I think it's a very <laughs> short. Feature. Good. It's just connecting to massive existing Missing infrastructure. Dots. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. And similarly, should the installer ask if you want like copies equals two for the essential OS components? And Lucas requested that, I don't know, five years ago, forever ago. Anyway. Well, there, there is a, I mean, sure, we're turning slowly into a BSD install, BSD config call, but there are some features that the user interface has that the environment environment variable environment no, 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 no. that the environment variables <laughs> don't uh, this has some of them have been reported into bugs in into bugzilla and some of them are just you know hanging out there on uh, mastodon somewhere people saying that let's say um the 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 4k something with 4k yeah using sector size of 4k is apparently can be set in that TUI or GUI if you're too fancy, it can be set into the TUI, but it, you can't set it inside an, in, in, an environment variable to reuse it next time uh, if you're doing mass deployments, for example. Hmm. So uh, those are also very tiny things that, uh, I mean, I don't know, is 15 going to be a, is 15 going to be a, what do you call that? A, a b b Bug release. Well, how do we do this? Oh, no new features. Oh, oh, features oh, nice. and odds are bug bug fixes. <laughs> cool. Goran, what you got? And welcome back. It's been a few months since you've wow. been able to attend. 
Yeah, hello. Well, good to be back. Uh, I was working on my MVP lab a little bit, and the only thing that's left is uh, little and big Indian, and I have a bug with sending file descriptors. Uh, other than that, it's binary compatible with uh, list, but as a plus or bonus of being easier to edit, filter, merge, and so on. Um, list is imagined as a format for messaging, and it's perfect for that, but not so much for storing. So, I gave up on the idea of making it perfect because uh, before I start using it, so I started using it in, uh, uh, well, a patch of storage almost a year ago. And that is, uh, well, vnet.interface equals auto being replaced with actual e pair, uh, well, one of the, uh, Pairs of an e pair. That that sounds dumb, but yeah, that that's how it is. Uh, so uh, currently, I have a branch, and I wanted to do a Santa Claus for the new year, but I I couldn't make it in time. Uh, so currently, it works only for storing, and uh, if you have. Uh, Auto in your VNet, it's going to replace it with uh, uh, ePair using libish config. So I learned there's a thing called uh, uh, internal library to FreeBSD, which means you can use it from the world, but you cannot use it from the ports. And there's some alteration to make file that you need to do in order to, to use that library. But it makes creating e pair and checking for errors a breeze. It, it's really, it, it's really nice. Uh, but there's a problem with the jail utility. Uh, the problem is that all knowledge that, uh, jail needs comes from the, the jail conf. And now I'm, uh, trying to do something outside of that jail conf and stick it into the structure uh, where it holds the config. And the problem is that I have to do it before the variable substitution kicks in in the jail conf. And at that point, the utility doesn't know if that particular jail is going to be stored or not. So should I create an e pair or not? So currently, in a, in a current uh, uh, state, my branch is creating a bunch of e pairs when it shouldn't. It doesn't work for wildcard jails. Uh, it doesn't work if you just type jail dash c. But I'm happy that I made it work for at least uh, invocation of jail dash c and the jail link. So I can check my hypothesis that the, the VNet interface can be dynamically assigned to a jail. And uh, that's what I'm working on. I think I will have to break uh, the uh, parsing of the config, loading configuration into multiple steps so that my uh, replacement of VNet interface kicks in at the right time and only at the right time. Have you looked that, at Crest's make e pair and does it help you in any way, shape, or form? Uh, it's great, but uh, it's still, I think, this approach that I'm taking, we're going to need it for other things. As Jamie stated, 
uh, Trump meeting, uh, having some data remembered for the jail that's uh, in kernel, we're going to need that anyway. So most of that work is actually integrating every tree and jail, uh, uh, the kernel side of the jail, and uh, every list interface. Oh, uh, sorry, VNet interface auto is only user space, and uh, it, it's uh, top of the iceberg. It, it's uh, it's what gives you the the hands on what the hell am I working on? But the most of the work is actually the, the every tree and integration with the jail. So we're gonna need something like that. And Jamie, I listened and I tried to, to do everything you said. Well, almost everything. Uh, it's at a state which is disastrous if you run it, but uh, uh, hopefully by now Jamie got used to it. That I'm gonna make something disastrous and work towards polishing it. That's how this patch with uh, NV list and retrie uh, stored in the first place. Uh, so right now it's it's really not something I recommend outside a virtual machine because I might not work with memory uh, efficiently and I'm going to delete something on your drive. Uh, but eventually, uh, I'd like to implement it so that uh, on one side, Jamie, you said you'd like RB3 to, to be the base of the structure, which NV3 is. Uh, you said you, you would like the Yes, only that uh, names and values Zoom meeting are... is actually on my laptop. Huh? Dan, I'm going to mute you if you're in the middle of something. Go ahead, Goran. Uh, so the, the second request I heard from Jamie is that name va names and values uh, of attributes or strings, which is very easy, like two lines of code to limit in uh, NV3. I would argue that it's better to let the whole structure, but if we want to uh, retain only strings, it's really, really easy. And it already serializes to NV list and deserializes from it. It's not um, that I want a partial NV list structure that contains only strings. It's that I want the name value paradigm to be the jail parameter names and values, not a blob equals something with only strings. That's to me, that's no better than blob equals something that might have something besides strings. When you say blob, what do you What I mean actually... is you are passing a large opaque chunk of data, this NV list, as a single jail parameter, rather than okay. different parts of a list as different named parameters. Isn't that what we want? <laughs> the second one is the one we want. Well, the one I want. <laughs> okay, but... At the start of my work, I tried to say that we're going to need some dynamic parameters that are not in the structure. That, that's the, well, that's obviously the base of my assumption. Okay. I mean, adding just one more parameter is way easier than what I'm doing. Uh, that being said, the VNet interface being a string in a uh, in a jail structure is fine by me, but uh, I thought that we want some dynamic parameters, and uh, I thought why not add VNet interface into it? Uh, I oh, think yeah, you want dynamic point, parameters, yes. Dynamic, but yeah. still in the parameter namespace, not just within a single 
parameter content. <sighs> okay, so we don't want dynamic at all, or, or uh, I don't get how the, the structure should look like. Um, it's not a matter of what the structure, the structure should, in my vision, the structure should look like a string. I want to be able to say something like jl.env or .dynamic.foo equals bar in my jail conf. I don't want to say jl.env list equals, well, I don't know how to say it equals because it's a uh, binary blob. So I, you know, I can't even put it in a jail.conf as a binary blob. Yeah, but it's already there. I mean, the VNet interface is already a parameter. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. If if this is all about the VNet interface, yeah. But you were you were getting on and talking about the uh, whole MV list thing again. Uh, it's the base of the implementation, but as I say, it doesn't have to be for the VNet interface. I just took okay. the chance I to... Do. To, to bring it all together and uh, understanding that we will somehow need some dynamic parameters. I just used the VNet interface as an example for it. But yeah, when, once I do implement it in any way, we can see what the VNet interface on the kernel side actually might be. Okay. At this point, I, I, don't, I don't care too much. Okay. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I needed a place where to save that uh, that value. So when I'm stopping, I know how to, well, let's say reversely uh, replace that VNet interface auto and actually destroy the, the proper interface. I mean, I'm not destroying it automatically, but if you have a, uh, for example, post top that is destroying e pair. Uh, I'm making it work with with auto. Okay. Does it sound like we're on the same page here, you and uh, Goran and Jamie? I think so. Well, yeah, I think. I know what I need to do, and once it's done, well, I'm going to make data arrive there, then we're going to choose if it's going to be by boat or a train. Cool. Is there any help you need from the group at this time, Goran? Only time, and on a positive note, I'm on vacation till Monday, so I'm probably having enough time. Excellent. Well, we look forward to your the fruits of your work. Thank you. Let's see. Chris, do you have any news to report from your desk or from the Enterprise Working Group? Does my audio work finally? Yes, sir. You look great. Uh, great. Yes, big success. All right. So, um, no particular news from the Enterprise Working Group, unfortunately, because I was still recuperating the last couple of days. But I do have some progress on the uh, research and development that I did. But that is really so tightly woven into Beehive that I guess we should probably wait for tomorrow with that. Fair enough. That is great news, and that goes for Antrenig and myself also. Antrenig, you look like you're busy with that. Are you building that list? And welcome to Antrenig's new apartment. Hello. Um, we still don't have proper internet connection, but hopefully soon. I cool. have a question. Yes, sir. Um, um, so and 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 whoever knows, please go ahead because I, um, I I we've never had this issue before. We're adding a, a feature called Jailer Edit, where you can edit a configuration of a jail. And it got me thinking that if a jail is running and it got started with a specific configuration, then you modify the configuration 
then you said that you want to shut down the jail. Will it shut the, down the jail with the old configuration or with the new configuration? Because what if the new configuration are not compatible with the current shutdown of the jail that was started with the old configuration? I think Jan brought this up once, like a half a year ago. It shuts it down with the new configuration unless you just want to just plain kill the jail, which you okay. usually don't. Yes. So maybe I should like save the file of the config in let's say var run jail somewhere temporarily. Would that sound like a good idea? That makes sense, yes. That makes sense, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And that's also the same place where we save the GID files, right? I believe so. I don't use those files, so yes, I believe they're var run. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, that's the only question that I had for now. Thank you. Cool. Levi, any questions? You joined a few minutes ago. No, maybe I can add to that one. Has anyone Please. had an issue? Has anyone had an issue with that? That you know, you modified the GL config and then during shutdown it crashed because it relied on the old config. Like, I'm wondering if anyone had a production issue with something like this. Well, I wouldn't call it production, but uh, talking with Dave about the envy list, whatever idea was that you would save the configuration of a jail in the kernel. So while stopping, it would actually look at that place and enter the configuration itself. I'm not going to discuss how good or bad that approach is because it's, from a technical point, it's just another place to look for your jail comp. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it did pop up, and uh, that's actually why I started with uh, Envy List and Envy Tree work back then. Cool. Rodney, anything from you? Nope. Fly on the wall. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Welcome, Buzz Buzz. Let's see. Dan, uh, is your jail infrastructure working to your liking? And do you have any goals for 2024? We may have stepped away now that it's easy to step away. <clears throat> Well, everyone, uh, we've touched on some vague goals for 2024. Let's perhaps take a brief peek at the desired features list and see how we are doing. Not everyone is present, obviously, but uh, Jan is not here, jail file descriptors, and feel free to Chime in as I run through these titles. Have a user land jail daemon. I think that's taking various forms in plumbing rather than yet something all encompassing. State changes to dev CTL, definitely yon territory and quite of these are, are yon territory. Uh, teach jail a to export jail.com for parameters and variables as environment variables to exec hooks. Uh, is that in concept similar to what you're doing, Goran, with a completely different mechanism? Uh, it might have some intersection. Okay. UCL support, non-root jails, uh, a bit like the uptime that keeps coming up. And of course, is uptime on this list? If it's not, let's get it there. <clears throat> Package to deploy jails. That can mean a few things, but I know there's a desire for, say, an ecosystem of prepackaged uh, jail appliances. And also, package base has arrived such that uh, that's a new strategy available to us for deploying jails. Kernel managed state Sorry. machines for jails. Go ahead, Goran. Uh, the previous one used package to deploy jails. I thought yeah. it's also about the 
package base because that's something I would like to, to see as a part of that, I would say, ticket Gosh. issue, whatever. Let's see. Uh... Have you tried package base on just a regular host, not a jail? No, uh, no, but it shouldn't be all that hard. No, it uh, shouldn't. I mean, uh, installing into package into jail should be actually installing into change Correct. So once once the installation is. Uh, well, working, you should just, I think it's dash C or dash R, I forgot which parameter. Sounds they both right. work, but they do the they do a different thing. One of them true to the other one changes the root directory, which is kind of ironic because the other one is also called true. It's like, I'm not going to go into this now. It's, okay. it's a whole mess. Do document that if you would for future discussions. Ah, uh, anyway. Some ideas my students had while they were setting up a lab. I don't know if they're worth to think about even, but I, I'm lucky to throw them in here. Go ahead. Oh, you'll drop them in the list here? Or you did mention um, building a list. Yeah, so one of the interesting questions that they had is, uh, in PF or IPFW, is there a way to specify a jail rather than its IP address? I assume this is assuming that the jail is not running in VNet mode, as in, let's say, proxy, um, okay, has Enet proto TCP from any to jail dub dub dub, right? Instead of specifying the IP of the jail, is there an integration between jail and the uh, the firewall layers, basically. And one of my students got, got really deep into understanding something called nsswitch.conf. I wonder, has anyone ever here used nsswitch.conf for things like NES? And his idea was, can we integrate nsswitch with um, the whole libc part of it with the jails? Specifically, again, you have to be running non-vnet jail for this to work, so the kernel can be aware that jail A has an IP address of, I don't know, 127002, where you can do ping and you give it the jail name and using NS switch, uh, it will basically figure out what the IP, what should that name convert into, which is a very interesting idea. Like you could have done something like this with LDAP integrations and uh, this stuff a long time ago. And as far as I can tell, it shouldn't be that hard to integrate something like this. It, it would be a dope idea, at least, you know, to do like ping and the name of the jail, and there you go, it's available. But again, I don't think this can work with VNet jails, because then that would be a totally separate network stack. And we the, 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 the kernel would not be aware what the IP inside of that other stack is, so... Well, maybe there is, maybe I'm just lazy, I don't know. But yeah, that, that's another idea that the students had. So um, are you not having perhaps just, I don't know, hosts or DNS entries per jail such that you can, you can. ping that host name? So what are, you, what, what are you doing differently? Which is what we did. What we did yeah. is setting up a DHCP server okay. for VNet jails with a DNS integration using NS updates. All works fine. It's the same as co connecting two computers to a switch back in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. No difference. Okay. But the idea was, hey, the kernel is aware that there is a jail with the IP address of 1234. Again, non-VNet jail. Okay. Is there a way where someone can do ping jail A and the kernel will automatically convert that into the jail's IP address? Because it, it knows the host name of the jail as well as the IP of the jail. Right, so that's I think is a very cool idea. Uh, this is something that even Linux doesn't solve. Like all of the Linux container implementations, they they require DNS mask to do something like this. So I don't know. Observations like from others. Does that sound like the right track or less so? And the, and While... if you implement the second one. 
the first one is automatically kind of built in, right? Like integrating the idea of uh, converting a name of a GL into its IP address inside PF or IPFW. Sorry, go on. Well, I can give you an answer to your specific question. You reminded me of something. Um, I realized that if I start with a PF that's by default block in pass out, I'm not going to actually end up with something that's good for the jails. And I couldn't find anywhere the mention of self in PF. And it's a very last special part? mention self. of what? Self? self. There is. Yes. It's called me. From any to me. As far as I know, that works. No, it's self. I'm using it right now. So, yeah, I, I learned about it. Self is a special keyword in PF that contains all the IP addresses of the, of the box, but it doesn't contain the IP addresses of JITS. So if you're, and it's dynamic. Interesting. Uh, so you can, I had a problem that I was blocking in and that was blocking for the jails too. And it, there was all kinds of problems uh, if I just block in. So uh, you just reminded me that self in PF, I don't know if IPFW has it. Uh, I would expect something like that uh, to exist. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you're if you're doing something, start with blocking from anyone to self, from any to self. And also, I didn't understand what what did you want to do, like Nat, or uh, what what are you trying to do with the uh, jails actually? Yeah, so, Anjanik, um, the motivation uh, is not, or what? The motivation is, let's say you have five services inside the jail, right? A web server, a um, uh, a Samba, whatever it is, five things that you have inside the jail. Now, now you want to configure a firewall properly, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to say something like, you know, block all N, and then you want to say, okay, allow N from any to if the IP address is the destination of the jail. Now, typically what we do is we put the IP address of the jail. But again, I've, I've, I've only used VNet my whole life, even before it was in generic. So, um, okay, let's say you're not using VNet. Let's say you're you're using uh, uh, IP equals new instead of, instead of VNet equals new. Okay, so now the kernel is aware that there is a jail A, let's, let's call it jail dub dub dub. Jail dub 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 is IP address is 10.0.0.2. Okay, great on this specific interface. Okay, great. And it knows the host name of the jail, the name, the host name, everything about the jail. The kernel is all aware of that. So now I want to, I, I have a the dub 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 server. I have an SMB server for jail named SMB. I have a, let's say, what other services can you even have? I have no idea. You, you have an NTP jail, for example, let's say you have an LDAP jail. Now you want to configure the firewall. Now, one way to do this is to set inside the firewall, the IP addresses of the jail, allow port 111 to jail dub 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 or whatever it is right so here's 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 the problem let's say somehow for some reason you modified the configuration of the jail now the jail has a different ip address you have to go and modify its name it's sorry you have to go and modify its ip address inside the firewall but what if the kernel was where the firewall was aware that okay just jail dub 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 i don't give it an IP address. I just tell it GL dub dub dub. And then the firewall would translate that into a IP address, the GL name into an IP address. Now you can do this over the host name layer in ETC hosts. That's one option. Or even if you have a DNS resolution properly set up, you can also do that. That also works. But just like knowing your own jails is a good idea. If you have a beefy box with a lot of services inside of it, so you wouldn't go back and forth into configuring IP addresses here and there. You would just configure it in a single place in the in the jails configuration file. That's it. Again, we're talking non-VNet jails because when you have VNet, now the kernel is not aware about the IP address of the jail itself. 
because it's in a different network stack. Mm -hmm. That's also a good question. Can we know the IP address from the outside to the inside without the jigsawing inside? But that, that's a question for another day, I guess. So th that's the motivate. That's the motivation here, basically. And and it could work in, in multiple uh, solutions. Let's say if you have an nginx, right? Let's say let's say you have an nginx. You have an upstream, and the upstream of the nginx is um, is mm -hmm. is a jail. Right. Let's say you're you're running a Go application or a PHP application inside the jail, and you're running a reverse proxy on the host. Right. So what I do is I always have to specify. Okay, dear nginx proxy pass to IP ten zero zero two. But now I can say upstream to whatever dub 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 translates into. Now it will automatically know. Okay, so that's that's the name of a jail which has the IP, whatever it is. Right, so uh, it, there's a lot of good benefits in this, basically. Um, yeah. I, that's the, yeah. Sorry, I understand, and I can tell you about workarounds I did for all of these, uh, because I obviously didn't find a solution. So, uh, for the later one, well, using. Uh, uh, um, Unix domain socket, if you can, if you, everything is on the same host, kind of helps. And even if not everything is on your same host, at least using those that are, are on the same host through a Unix domain socket lowers the maintenance. So I know it's not a solution, and I know it's not what you want to hear, actually. And about first, well, what I did was, it actually doesn't matter if it's a VNet or non-VNet jail. Uh, I did it personally for VNet jails because I could centralize it. But once the jail gets an IP address, or you can create a service for it, it can send something to another Unix socket that's actually a process listening on a host or a process listening on your bind or NSD instance or whatever. Uh, so you can kind of be dynamic with uh, IP addresses. And if you use anchors in PF, you can kind of achieve what you're asking. Uh, I, I didn't. Well, as I said, it's a workaround. It's not perfect, and uh, it requires you to write your own daemon running, listening on a Unix socket, security, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that, that's the closest I could get to, uh, let's say, solution to, to what you're asking, and you're not the only one asking for it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the other thing I had to do is unbound because all the I register jails IP address and host name in MSD when DHCP releases them. But you can easily see that if it's a non VNet jail or a VNet jail without such a uh, complexity, you can still from a jail write something to a Unix socket and then the process listening on it does something. So yeah, that's, we've, that's we've, literally the closest. And, yeah, we've, we've, uh, had a very, we've had a we've had a very good luck with NS updates. So you know DNS server and the DHCP server talking together. It could mm -hmm. be NSD, it could be bind, whatever it is. NS updates has been the best option and it works globally. Like with Nginx, we don't specify IP addresses. We specify the host name. It translates. Also in the firewall, mm -hmm. you can say from any to, let's say, hq.ilria.com. It will know whatever that means automatically. So the, we've had the best luck in that. But uh, I keep just going back and forth. Like, what if we just use everything that comes with base? The only solution that I came to is using hosts file. <laughs> well, right? Yeah, I, I think... briefly, this is like... You know, Unix 101, I get that. But do we have unique opportunities with jail, be it through domain sockets that you wouldn't have on a traditional host? Because identifying a host is identifying a host. Go ahead. Uh, I think if you bind PF in jails too much, it won't really like it. I mean, this is, a, well, Unix philosophy, kind of. I mean... 
how do you jail is everything pf is everywhere how do you separate or be smart about it but i think well pf knowing about jails that i think that's a kind of stepping the boundary i might be wrong or i don't know maybe something like uh Uh, having NSD in base would solve your problems. Uh, what I actually do is use Unbound to be a, like a DNS router. If your request is for a certain domain that's under DHCP, then route it to NSD, otherwise ask the world yeah. and stuff like that. So the little trick I did is that... Uh, yeah. Whole unbound uh, configuration is under slash work slash unbound. And what I do is I configure the Unix socket, the, the control Unix socket of unbound to be in the same directory. And I share that directory with the jail. So when it says, okay, there is a command that I can look up to later. Uh, that you can say to Unbound, okay, forget about this uh, fully qualified domain name. Uh, throw it out of the cache. So the next time it's going to ask whatever, bind NSD, whatever. Uh, I do have a question for you about NS update because bind has a way to dynamically update. Do yeah. you know if it can work with NSD? Somehow, magically. So, just FYI, IPFW is jailware, non-VNet jailware. So you can do IPFW in, in there. You can do IPFW, add rule 25, allow IP from blah to jail, dub, dub, dub. It works with IPFW, but not with PF, just FYI. Nice. And that's been, yeah, and that's been in there since, I think, 13 or 12. Point three, one of uh, somewhere. So it, it's pretty modern. It's been around for like two, three years. Hmm. Um, yeah, nice. uh, it's in the man page. We haven't used it because we moved to PF years ago. Uh, but maybe, maybe it might be a good idea to start looking to I in, into IPFW. Anyways, it's a key precedent. Uh, about... I'm curious who did that and what their motivation was because that sounds like a lot yeah. of work and it's interesting. That's pretty recent. Go yes. ahead. Um, and about your your question about uh, so we do use uh, the ISC DHCP with bind using NS update. We never had problems there. I think one of my team members also did open BSD's DHCPD, which is a fork of ISCs anyway, with bind. We also haven't had any issues there. And the last bit that I'm trying to remember is one one of our team members started using DNS mask for dynamic DNS records, but I don't know if it was using NS update or just with a config file. Because in, in DNS mask, you can just specify a config file with hardcoded IP addresses. So I'm not sure about that. Um, and DNS mask is different because it's all, let's say inside of one process. I think it has a separation, but for simplicity's sake, the DHCP and DNS already know how to talk to each other. Oh, you mean if you want to talk between NSD and bind? No, if I want to talk between DHCP and NSD, because NSD is stubborn in uh, reading only configuration file. And what I'm currently doing is having a script that DHCP executes with uh, arguments like host name and IP address, and then that script tries to be smart. And the part which I really, really hate is trying to be smart. I know I can, well, if I put it into production, it will blow something. I am absolutely yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, as uh, last I worked with NSD was like five years ago, and I didn't see anything about dynamic configuring anything with NS update in it. I, I haven't seen anything like that in there. So maybe it have changed, but definitely I haven't seen anything like uh, NSD using NS update. That, that that was like five, six years ago. And I don't think that they would add that because like, it's not part of their philosophy. 
as a DNS server. So yeah, uh, maybe. maybe, probably. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, oh, I remember one more thing that I was using. You, you can kind of be dynamic around jails if you put IP addresses into a table. So you're not, for example, using that on an interface call on a network, but uh, using a table. That I explored how to be dynamic with the PF because it's not far with IPFW, uh, but PF is uh, more static and uh, tables and anchors are the best answer I got. Okay, I need I need to go over that indeed. Um, uh, I I keep wondering if uh, maybe maybe we're just overdoing it because. Uh, all of the conversations that I got into that the best idea would be is to just ship the DNS mask with Jailer and use the DNS masks automation, which it has a lot of good types of automation and you can just run it in a single command line as well. So uh, it, it yeah, and, and I also use it for reggae. So it's not the first time that someone, someone does that and uh, well, yeah, I had a, maybe you got it as a snarky comment, but I didn't mean to. When I said a jailer more and more looks like a CBSD, what I meant is uh, at the start of these meetings, I said, I have a feeling like we're doing the same thing all, all over again. And in that context, it, it looks like CBSD more, but uh, CBSD looks like whatever you want to call it, IOKH or whatever before it, right? We, we are practically reinventing the wheel and I really want us to stop that and doing that hopefully soon ish. Um let's see what else my students had as a bug or something in the documentation. Um Oh, yes. Um, so, uh, Michael, one more note on the handbook for jails. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> so, as far as I can tell, wait, what, what, what is, what does this note mean exactly? Oh, um, welcome to my world. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. Right. Okay. So, so, the, so there is, there is an article, not article, there is a section in the handbook for using thin jails with open ZFS snapshots. Uh, the same idea can be replicated. I mean, uh, and there's also one with null FS. So like the, the new section on jails in the handbook is pretty amazing. It has pretty much everything that someone needs. The dot include is not included, uh, ironically, uh, but the, the, maybe we can add that as well. And the last bit that my students had a question with was about updating the jail. Uh, I'm trying to guess, did they not read correctly or what? Oh, yes. Um, there is nothing in the <laughs> handbook. Jail must be updated from the host. Oh, sorry okay. about that. No worries. They just they just don't know how to read. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, so it, it does say in the handbook that jail must be updated from the host, um, basically. So that's that's something that... And, and so, it is in the handbook, yeah. And the yes, handbook and is prescribing is. that. And would you want yes. to ever run FreeBSD update within a jail, or do, do bad things happen? Um, see, this is this is one of the questions that we got into, mm -hmm. which is say if you are a quote unquote a hosting provider, can someone update their own jail, their own container, their own whatever it is? They probably can't due to things that we do underneath. And the question was, is there a way to update a jail from the inside? Uh, I might be wrong, but I think the answer to that is changing some ch flags or something. So it could be done by the FSTAT. Um, I think it's called FSTAT. I, I'm, 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 I... I don't do anything like that, honestly. Uh, uh, I... 
But I'm using FreeBSD updates to update my drills and they are take drills. Uh, and the only gotcha that I have is that when you update your host to, for example, 14 from 13 mm -hmm. and your drills are still 13, you're just about to update them too. It's going to wrongly detect the version because it detects the kernel version and then doesn't do the, the proper update. And there is the dash dash currently running in FreeBSD yeah. updates that kind of solves that. So that, that's the only thing with uh, inside the jail update I had. Well, yeah, briefly, I can think of another issue. Can a jail blindly go from 13 to 14 on a 13 host and then find that none of their binaries work or is there a seatbelt to prevent that from happening no the freebsd update command will just do that i've i've done that when i was new to freebsd so you can jump to 15 <laughs> on 13 and then have a nice day and then you go yeah. into the jail you can jxec into it nothing runs you do ps it says oops i have no idea what these <laughs> you know what, what the abi looks like so yeah that, that's a very common issue basically uh no the freebsd jail update will not let you know about anything like that so ah there you go uh yes i just remembered yeah there you okay now i understand what what they meant with this the um the the freebsd update command with the dash j works only if the jail is running oh interesting okay if, if the jail I would is expect off, that. There, there there should also be some sanity tech text added to the FreeBSD update command and that you can detect a, a difference between user and kernel and with you named dash capital KU and it should go blah I don't know your user and kernel are way out of whack here I probably shouldn't run this update yeah it doesn't do that and the, 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 the issue that my students had is that they thought okay I'm going to stop the jail then upgrade it so when you stop the jail and then upgrade it, it's going to tell you, I don't know this jail named Michael. So, because, you know, it reads the output from JLS. And the only reason why it does that is to get the path of the jail from JLS. Uh, so it's very normal that it can't understand that. I guess that there is a way to go over it, which hmm. is, you know, just run the jail utility with the dash E and get the config file of a jail and its path. That's definitely something that's doable. But uh, yeah, my team is responsible for adding the dash J flag inside FreeBSD update. And we haven't even thought about that because we were thinking, why would you ever not run a jail? You know, <laughs> if you're not running a jail, then why do you have it? So uh, that was a very bad idea. Yeah, having it stationary sounds great because you just can't have other collisions, but you have a new collision. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, maybe yeah. you stop the jail in order to update it because you don't want to update the jail while it's running. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and, but, huh. and then it's like, yeah. I can't find the jail, so... But yeah, free BSD fact, update, you can run it. You can tell FreeBSD update with the minus B option, I think. This yes. is where you're supposed to install it. And I don't think you have to tell it the jail name, do you? No, no. That's how we used to update jails before the dash J flag. Exactly. Okay. Um, Self-promotion. I, I use make jail for updating my jails and I'm pretty sure it needs to have it running because it's using FreeBSD update. And I've noticed that if I try to run it on a jail that isn't running, it starts to jail, which leads to some interesting circumstances sometimes when you didn't expect that jail to be running. Uh, tiny question. Patch versions are allowed to be different, right? So if the host is running 14 release patch zero, so no patches, but the jail is 14 with patch yeah. four, the latest I think is four now. I even uh, think you can make the jail newer in that case. Yeah. So long so as the, the same version, I'm pretty sure you can have it more patched. Okay. You got to be a little bit. You got to be a little bit careful there with the patch level of a jail, in that that 
can also have kernel changes. So if the host is still running Oh. 13 pound zero and you try and run a 14 pound five, you may not have kernel support for what's in pound five. Right, Mm but -hmm. that we can check with the uname dash k capital if the kernel uh, ABI has changed, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Lowercase k. Oh, sorry. I, I was thinking previous. No, 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 no. Don't change it. I was thinking previous version. <laughs> yeah, right. So, wow. Um, all the tools are making these checks, right? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Uh, even we don't Let's try in that. our own operating system. And I mean, in in lower OS, we would easily allow a user to create an already image then. that has some And variable and the ones that do make the check, like the the kernel module loading code that keeps you from loading a wrong kernel module often is wrong about what's compatible and isn't compatible it just it's too too stringent You'll know. One quick observation. I was very impressed by how package PKG detected like ABI versions in a jail or a cheroot and like gave me the correct like 14 packages on a 13 host and other neat stuff. So do what they're doing, whatever it is, at least what they're doing. So <laughs> anyhow, okay let's keep track of this because, yeah, I can see how you can shoot your feet in multiple dimensions. Go ahead, Dan. I want to talk about two scripts that come with package now Yes, they're sir. for auditing they're for oh wait And you dropped a link in chat as a, I have as a a phone good call boy. Uh-oh. I'll have to come back <laughs> okay. um so there's that script uh, uh which and and 410 let me see if i can drop that in there as well uh Do I i just recommend update? Okay. everyone runs this on their host and on their jails on their on their hosts that have jails because it will do a um it'll run package audit on each one of the jails and it'll also do a, a security check for unpatched kernel issues assuming that the kernel issues have been added to VUXML. So basically this lets you know if if you've got anything that should be updated in your jail or in your host. And So I have I, it running from my monitoring system. I Go don't ahead. know about you, but there are companies that are built on this. Like there are Linux companies that are built on these two scripts. Like Let's <laughs> you just cry open your trees. container <laughs> and your your debt packages are out of date or not. Like there are companies, billion dollar companies that are built on top of these two scripts. That's We great. suck in marketing. <laughs> well, four, four, the 410 script's been around for a long, long time. Which script? 410. Yeah. 410.package. Um, but uh, one, one of them, one or both of them only recently got added the package. So they used to be part of a separate package and then they were added into package, into PKG. They were in a separate um, port for a while, I believe. Well, as far back as I recently 13.0, in the last oh, year. you're a part of package. Yeah. And I think they're in 12. But I can't, I don't have a 12 handy. I'm planning to just give you a context. Why would you have a jail that is not running? Think about Let's Encrypt. For me, it's mostly off. Yeah, same with me, same with me. I've started using Let's Encrypt with a, a, a jail that runs in a cron job. Like I've, I've never done that before, but now it sounds very handy, you know? Only a single jail has Let's Encrypt and uh, I nullfs the directory and then directories, and then I just uh, uh, do update in, in, in there. I mean, I, I'm trying to get to a point where a host is disposable. uh like just completely disposable host all i care about is the jails the, the pf configuration at at some point hopefully not even the pf configuration hopefully like the jail conf would have pf stuff in it so you wouldn't even care about that and uh, last bit is reverse proxy um Yes, just please. like nginx configuration that's it like the host should be completely disposable
uh, you know, pets versus cattle's battle that goes onto the cloud world. Um, so yeah. So going up that list, <laughs> this can in general wait, but just just a, as a refresher, I mean, hop on the dock, feel free to uh, nuke anything that's complete or uh, no longer makes sense or add to it or have at it because, hey, a bunch of effort went into this, I believe, from Dave, and we thank him for that. I have a question, and Please. you can go to the 37, the line to, uh, oh, yeah. in the spreadsheet. Yeah. Yes, sir. In this one, you mean? Yeah. Jamie, this is what I was thinking about when I added NV3. And I thought you were okay with this. And Jamie, you're muted. I may have muted you for some beautiful background music. Oh, no, I muted myself. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Right, yes. Visible via JLS8, modifiable JLA. That's, you know, that's the big thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm nowhere near that, but the, the reason I'm fiddling with uh, jail and every tree is this one. Is which one? The 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 whole 37 metadata. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that, that reminds me. DCH created uh, a problem report for me for OpenZFS to be able to get the mount point of a, to find out what jail, a jailed ZFS data set is associated with it. Because you know how you say set jail equals and then a data set name? You can never get that value back. Hmm. So you assign it to a jail but you can't later find out what jail it's associated with. And that's useful for, for scripting purposes. Say I, I, I wanna back up a bunch of data sets. I just wanna know what jail it's in, because then I can find out, find out the man point and then I can get the ZFS snapshot directory, for example. Dan, uh, yeah? I think uh, I might be wrong, but I think you can either get it from the mount command or you can get it from zpool history. I'm not sure about the zpool history, but I'm sure about the mount yeah. command. You want to be able to do this without knowing the name of the jail. So what My information case, are you running off of if you don't have the, the mount point or the, the list jail of name? The data sets. Okay. The, here's the list of 10 data sets that I want to back up. And so I want to find out where the .zfs snapshots directory is, for mm. example. And you can't find that out without knowing what the jail is. It simplifies my backup scripts that just take a snapshot of a bunch of data sets and then back those up to somewhere else. Hmm. I'll, fi I'll, I'll find the ZFS um, problem report. Okay, yeah, post it if you got it. That'd be awesome. Uh, question? Yes. Um, I think to Jamie, I guess. Um, uh, how hard would it be to add like a created thing in the in the Z in, in the jail structure in the kernel where it's just a, a an epoch? of the time that the jail got created like would I, I don't think um, we need the whole ods thing right yeah that's uh something we touched on i think last week week before it's like yes not only should that be in the jail but uh i'd really like it to show up in uptime and i've got a note yes. to uh talk to mjg about it <laughs> okay so an so, epoch I, I, date I, per jail, or what was that exactly? Whoa. So in in the jail struct, there there would be a a, a key named uh, created, for example, which would be a a, a time a time t. Ah. I, I think that would make the most sense. Yeah, uh, time a t birth is time or something. Use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
exactly. And and time t would also be valid with uptime. And then we will teach, sorry, we will teach uptime that if you are in a GL, you need to read this other thing. Maybe, um, and I might be wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think we can set OIDs to jails. So like the jail would read the uptime from the OID from sysrc, which would be different inside the jail than outside the jail. I think that would be the way to communicate that with uptime. Yes, probably so. I don't I don't remember if it's an OID or a system call, but whichever it uses, it could be made jail aware. Okay. OIDs okay. are often jail aware. So now that's template yes. code at this point. Yeah. If if you if if you if you decide on a design, please let me know. I would love to code that myself. Okay. Free labor for you. There's the uh, ticket number. Cool. Thank you. Nicely done on uh, rationale, <laughs> and I've I've occasionally said that writing a bug report or a review is a bit like a conference talk proposal. You need to justify your approach. You have to show that you've done your homework. You have to uh, communicate. Nicely done. Okay, uh, is it worth punching through this list anymore, or have we touched on enough of them? Um, I I just have one last question, and I don't know. Just a second, and just yep. just to be clear, I didn't write that problem report. Okay, okay DCH cool. did. Got it. I don't thank you, DCH. <laughs> it took me a long time to unmute. Oh, there we go. Yep, you are correct, and I have it in the the minutes correctly. I misspoke. How could we? Yes, Antrenig. So for people who run logging infrastructure, I think this mostly applies to Dan. Um, uh, what's the best way to collect logs from the GL? Like, would I just tell my log reader, like log stash, or even if it's syslog or whatever it is that, hey, these are other paths that I want you to read messages from, or do we have a better way with GLs? Uh, I, I have no idea about this. And uh, now that our infrastructure is growing, we're moving away. We're, we're just going into a centralized logging system, basically, with the um, log stash. Nope, I lied. We're moving to Grafana's family, uh, whatever that the, they use. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's that's something that we're interested in, is to understand what would be the best way to read logs from jails, as well as the host, but, you know, jails mostly. I I believe I am a heathen in that I don't have a central repo for the logs. I let each host log itself, and I use sysutils log check. And basically, you, you whitelist the messages you don't want to see, and everything else gets mailed to you. And I don't get a lot of emails oh, about that. Um, I've been using that for about 23 years now <laughs> and it's well maintained by the debian project log check okay i also use fail to ban and i get fail to ban to look at the logs that are in the jails so fail to ban runs on the host and you just point it at the jail log files i don't know yeah. As far as I know, I'm the only person doing that. I don't know that anyone else does it that way. But maybe that's just because they haven't thought about it. But I, I think I blogged about it. Yes, there is a blog post about that, yes. And Le Levi also made a, made a bit of good point. There is something called Greylog, which is, uh, uh, yep. which is I think, Elastic and Logistash and all of the other. No, yeah, it's a Grafana alternative. Uh, 
Levi, am I wrong that it's based on the Elastic uh, stack, on the Elk stack, or, or is it based on the Grafana stack? Uh, I think that's correct. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's based on the Elk stack, yes. Great law. I might be wrong, but I think we even have it in ports. Let me check fresh ports. Um, yes, we have it. Yes, we have it in ports as well. Do you have that port Let's URL or name? Yes, path. sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I'll report on this in, in the end of the quarter. My my team will be implementing some good amount of centralized stuff, and uh, we're, we're very happy with the jails there. Okay, we are at a, I believe, a moose jaw, which is an hour and a half by air but from Portland into Canada. Yes. Anything else? Because we've definitely covered some great territory here. And to promote a future call in a few hours, uh, Daniel will be giving a demo of Zelta, his AUK-based zfs replication tool and i violated really my cool. own rule i do not have the link handy but it's a tab or two away just one sec i'll drop it in do, do, do. so anyway uh that's exciting he's been it's one of those tools that he had internally for years and years and then with just kind requests and nudging he then made public for the rest of us so oh, but coming up Zelda demo Open ZFS. and Zelts is gold in Latvian so he was happy to hear that and he has just <laughs> published a test suite to go with it if you look in his repo which is I believe Zelta tests Zelta tests with a hyphen between Zelta and tests. So, well, there's that. Uh, which and that's has had testing for two days. Which has had tests. Okay. Anything else? While you read it, there is a Zrepl that's a bit yep. more beefed up alternative with the Prometheus support and whatnot that uh, I'm using, well, everywhere. And yep. it, it has a really nice features. Amen. It's, uh, by it's the way, I, uh, recent version, the most recent version has my patch in it which exposes the data set that you have configured to be snapshotted or replicated or whatever, but doesn't exist. So your Prometheus will scream, actually Grafana. Um, Michael, what about the plans to reschedule the meeting? Um, did you already that... ask around? What's the status of that? So, if you did not operate on autopilot and read the announcement for this meeting today, I meant, made a simple mention there that, well, Tuesday is open, given that Friday evening in Europe would probably be quite unattractive. So show of hands for those present, would it be in any way beneficial to you to move this exact same time slot up a day to Tuesday rather than Wednesday, uh, just to accommodate, uh, was it, uh, Doug, was it, our OCI wizard, among other topics. And reminder, let's test his 9P code. Anyway, uh, that poll question, I assume many of you like me are on autopilot, but how do your Tuesdays look? Same time. Oh, you're raising him. Looks okay. How do you, how the hell do you raise hands in here? 
Oh, Jamie figured it out. There's a button somewhere. Under reactions on the bottom bar, at least on my reactions. phone. Reactions, okay. How How is raising a hand a reaction? It's an action. Jesus, what the hell is wrong? You're right. <laughs> well, yeah. That's two out of six or There's three. Well, I would like to react, but I don't know how. I don't even have reactions. Okay, well... Yeah, all I know is on the Android phone interface, if I tap the screen, I get a bar in the bottom and reaction is one of the things. I think oh, on the heart, Windows good. version, raising a hand was an action on its own, but I'm not certain. Cool. Cool, found it, thanks. That said, I will run it by other uh, parties. And that would tragically leave this slot open, meaning, well, you joked that this was becoming a FreeBSD update call, a packet filter and IPFW call, among other topics. Anyway, I did want to interject there. Are there some great resources on just the, the collision of jail and the available firewalls? Wow, there are yeah. million opportunities. Oh, Antranig is joining Jan at the disco at the CCC Congress, cool. The rave is raving. So at this point, let's keep firewalls. It's just sort of an, a related topic we'll touch on from time to time. Anything else? Happy New Year, completely forgot. Took the word out, <laughs> words out of my mouth. <laughs> Well, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm going to call it at 34 after, and I will be around a few minutes. This year is going to be the year of Unix on the desktop. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> to that cold. point, to that point, if we get TPM emulation, which uh, Corvin thinks he'll be doing, with all those laptops falling out of Windows 10 support, if they had a shim of FreeBSD with a TPM giving them... 11, well, for the win, and ZFS, of course. Oh, yeah, you reminded me. Yes, I sir. Some, I have some file called PPM play, which knows how to initialize the SWTPM. And I don't think I shared that with Corwin, so I should. Oh, yes, please. Yes. Anything related to TPM, please get it going. You saw that mail outside yeah, these announcements yeah. of like, hey, he's either got budget or time or both to work on that. So, yes. Cool. Yeah. And the uh, nice thing is to, to make testing easier now with uh, SWTPM service, which is a ripoff of a virtual OSS service which I wrote, so okay. I ripped up myself. <laughs> Great work, Goran. Thanks for joining, and thank you for that work. That is, you, that's awesome. Just saying. Thanks. Go cool. take care. Take care, everyone. Like Bye. and subscribe. See you. See you tomorrow. Like and subscribe is on to make footage. Okay. Bye.